Who am I? My name is Oliver Page. I'm a cryptocurrency trader and I'm currently using the AX platform. I've been asked by AX to share some of my trading strategies for the AX Academy. So who are AAX? AAX are a new exchange who were founded in 2018 and created with the same matching engine which is used to power the London Stock Exchange. This allows for ultra low latency and uses trusting technology. AAX offers OTC spots and futures trading. Wedge formations as a part of the AAX Academy. What is a wedge formation? A wedge is a formation of converging resistance and support lines. Wedge formations form regularly in the cryptocurrency market. They can indicate both reversal and the continuation of trends. In trading, there are two types of wedge formations. These are ascending and descending formations. Both can lead to the continuation and reversal of price. This is dependent on the breakout direction. A couple pointers on wedge formations before we take a deeper look into them. Firstly, wedge formations are most effective on the daily candles, with a formation taking at least three weeks. Secondly, wedge formations are often used alongside volumes in the stock market. In the cryptocurrency market, the volume indicator is misleading. Therefore, it should not be used alongside wedge formations. The first wedge pattern we're going to be looking at is the rising wedge pattern. The rising wedge pattern consists of two things. The first part of an ascending wedge is the ascending support line. The second part of a rising wedge pattern is the upwards resistance line. These two lines will converge to make the rising wedge pattern. A rising wedge pattern usually forms after a period of upwards movement and is seen to usually indicate that a reversal is near, showing that the bullish momentum is losing its strength. The rising wedge pattern can also be found in a downwards trend. When it is found in a downwards trend, it usually indicates that further downwards movement is in store. This is due to the potential reversal showing a lack of momentum. However, the downwards move is completely dependent on the breakout direction. As wedge patterns form, the overall volatility is seen to decrease. We can use the historical volatility indicator to help us see this. With rising wedge patterns being used a lot in traditional markets alongside the volume, in this example here, we can see why you don't use it in the cryptocurrency market. So we have a downwards trend, and then we have a rising wedge. This, alongside the falling volume, is definitely a bearish indicator. But then as we see, there's a spike in volume, and rather than it going down, it goes up against the wedge into a new upwards direction. As mentioned earlier, rising wedge patterns are seen with declining volume in traditional markets. However, in the cryptocurrency market, volumes are misleading. This is due to the fake volume problem, which is facing Bitcoin and some crypto exchanges. So now that we've had a look at the rising wedge pattern, let's have a look at the second one, which is the descending wedge pattern. The descending wedge pattern consists of two things. The first one is a downward support line. The second is a downwards resistance line. Wedge patterns are usually a bullish reversal signal. For example, we can see that this descending wedge pattern is clearly moving down as a trend. Although, once this is broken, Ethereum Classic then proceeded to explode. It moved from $4 all the way up to $12. When trading with descending wedge patterns, it is really important to wait for a breakout to occur. For example, here, we can see that there is clearly a descending trend line before this, and then you have the descending wedge. This would be presumed to be really bullish, although if you did not wait for the breakout to occur and you set up a long beforehand, you would have been hit with a 60% drop within the space of a month and a half. If a descending wedge is seen in a downwards pattern, it usually shows that the bears are running out of steam and is seen in the narrowing of prices. When seen in a bullish trend, descending patterns are usually a continuation pattern of the previous bullish price action. Like rising wedge patterns, descending wedge patterns are also used with volume in traditional markets. How effective actually are wedge patterns and how well do they work in practice? 
From personal trading experience, wedge patterns are much more effective and reliable with altcoins. Technical patterns with Bitcoin are often unreliable, whereas with many altcoins, they continue to work. Most altcoins have suffered heavily since their all-time highs in 2018, and many have seen wedge patterns, most of which are in the descending form. With the wedge patterns being used alongside Fibonacci retracements, it has allowed traders to gain from the pullback scene before the next drop, or to set up a short. So how do we draw a wedge, such as this one? So before I start drawing it, firstly I'm going to remove all of the drawing tools and indicators. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the triangle tool. This is the fourth one down. You want to click on the right-hand side where it says geometric shapes, and you want to go down to the triangle. You then want to select the high points of what you believe the wedge is. Wedges will take multiple attempts for you to get right, and it's important to keep persevering with them because you're going to draw them wrong multiple times. It's also important not to force them. If there isn't a wedge, there isn't one. Then you want to click search, and then you want to click where you believe the wedge started. So I believe that this is a descending wedge after a long period of upwards movement. So how am I going to test to see if this wedge is correct or not? Well, I'm going to look for validation points. So I can see there's clearly one here, here, and there's a couple here. So not many on the top. Although when I look on the bottom, I can see that there are multiple. You've obviously got the first one, two, three, four, and five. Now if I redrew this, would I be able to get more validation points from the top to make a more accurate descending wedge? Yes, I can. So as you can see here, by redrawing it again properly, I've managed to create a better descending wedge, this one with four validation points on top. So what indicators work best alongside wedge patterns? The first one which works really well is the Archimoku cloud. As we can see here with Ethereum Classic, there's a clear downwards wedge. This is then broken and creates a support line at $3.7, then moves up into the red part of the cloud and then continues to break clearly above it. This is a bullish signal alongside the downside wedge. If you're trading, you would then place it along. If correctly placing the long at around $5, you would have seen over 100% gain if you'd sold at $10. As we can see here, the price is moving in and out of the different parts of the Bollinger Bands until it breaks the descending wedge. As soon as it has broken the descending wedge, it then continues to stay above the median line, testing it multiple times before the surge. This combined with the Ichimoku cloud provides a really reliable signal. The SAR helps to see the momentum which a cryptocurrency has. So as we can see, the momentum is clearly swinging within this descending wedge, and as soon as it breaks out, there's a sustained period of positive momentum. The price tries to break below the SAR to flip it, although it doesn't manage to do this, and it carries its momentum forward. Another indicator which works is the Heiken Ashi candles. As we can see, there's clearly a generally red Heiken Ashi candle trend through this descending wedge until the breakout occurs, meaning when we place our trade, we want the Heiken Ashi to be green if we are placing a long trade. Here we can see all of the indicators working together. It may look very complicated, but now that we've broken it down, we can see how it works and how the indicators are very useful alongside the descending wedge, acting as validation multiple times on the direction of the breakouts and the scale on which it would occur. The AAX Vault. What is it? And what does it do? One of the newest features on the AAX Exchange is the AAX Vault. The Vault is a sub account created for the purpose of crypto management. In the AAX vault, you will place your AAB into it. From there, you will then receive interest on your AAB. When placing your AAB into the vault, you require a minimum of 100 AAB, 
at the moment, this is the equivalent of around 19 US dollars. Currently, you will receive an annualized rate of return of 4.5%. So if you have a thousand AAB and place it into the AX vaults with a return of 4.5%, after one year, you would have gained 45 AAB. Withdraw your AAB whenever you want at whatever time. With the AAX vault, there are no fees and there is no extended lockup period. The AAX vault allows you to make a passive income in the cryptocurrency market. This passive income comes alongside a consistent rate of return from the AAX vault. This is the AAX vault.